Now first just please note that we have dual heating per default taking place everywhere in the model. It says all domains, right? Now I want dual heating to take place almost everywhere in the model with one exception and that's the tube. As I mentioned there is vacuum in the tube and since not much of interest is going to happen in the vacuum I'm going to remove that domain from the interface just like that. Now with that done let's send in some current and I'll find all the conditions that I need by right clicking on dual heating I just did that. Um, I'll select for this condition electric currents and terminal. Let's do that and this lets us send in a current. I'll apply that to the patch right here and I'll just type in 15 amps. Um, for the current to have anywhere to go we'll also need a ground condition. And I'll find that too under electric currents it's ground. I'll apply that to the edge of the ground plane. Now these two conditions, the terminal and the ground, will together see to that we get a proper current distribution all over the model. From the dual heating interface we automatically get an electromagnetic heat source applying everywhere except for in the vacuum, which is not part of the model, right? And this heat source contains the heating that results from the electric current. So we actually already know what will heat up the fuse. Let's now define how the heat will be lost to the outside world. So, um, well, the fuse and the top surfaces of the board will be in contact with air and this means that some heat will be transported away through convection. And this can be modeled with a convective cooling condition. So right clicking on dual heating I can find that under heat transfer it's right here, convective cooling. The convective cooling condition requires a heat transfer coefficient and we'll set that to an estimated 5 watts per meter square and Kelvin. To make it easier to select the boundaries where convective cooling should apply I'll hit the YZ button, switching to a YZ view like that. And I'll use the select box tool. It's this one. So with this tool I can select exactly those boundaries where I want to apply this boundary condition. Remember though we have vacuum inside the tube and uh, convection doesn't take place in vacuum so let's remove those particular boundaries that are in contact with vacuum from this selection they're now removed. The only heat loss mechanism that does take place inside the tube is radiation and that's another boundary condition. We can find it under heat transfer and there's one called surface to ambient radiation. I'll select the exact same boundaries as I just removed from the convective cooling condition. The um, Radiation actually gets increasingly important to take into account when we get to high temperatures uh, because it's proportional to the temperature squared. Uh, not squared, it's the fourth power actually, which you can read from the equation right here. You'll always have access, access to equations in console and if you don't want to see them, if you find them scary, just click equation again and hide them. Uh, what you do need to fill in is the surface emissivity. This is a number between 0 and 1. I'll uh, go for a number 0.8. So 1 would be a perfect black body and 0 is no radiation at all. Finally, for the very last boundary condition, let's just assume that we know the temperature on the bottom boundary of the circuit board. And I'll set that to the default, which is room temperature, 293.15 Kelvin. Now that actually concludes the physics for this model. Uh, as the next step we'll need a mesh. You can spend uh, any amount of time on just perfecting the mesh if you want to but the defaults work fine in most situations. And I'll pick a fairly coarse mesh. I'll actually go for a coarser one. I'll click the build all button. In the study, selecting compute now will solve the model. And yes, here we go. That's a temperature distribution. Look at that, we have a solution. So it ranges from room temperature, that's again 293.15 Kelvin, up to a maximum right here in the fuse wire, 
which is approximately 937 Kelvin. This is exactly 4 Kelvin above the melting point of aluminum. So will it melt? Well, yes, just barely, but the fuse will melt. Now, just a couple of other results I wanted to show you in the model. In order to get the temperature distribution, COMSOL has had to also compute the electric potential distribution. I can look at that in a surface plot. Let's just add a 3D plot group, and to that I'll add a surface plot. I can type in capital V for voltage, and just hit the plot button, and plot that. As you can see from the range, right here, the maximum electric potential right now is 0.17 volts, and most of the voltage drop, as you may have, may have expected already, is across the fuse wire. And finally, you can also plot the current distribution in the wire. Let's select that from this quite extensive list of things you can plot. So current in charge, and we'll find current density norm, that's the magnitude of the local current density. So you get the currents computed everywhere in the model, of course, but I guess the wire is probably the most interesting place to look at. The orange parts in the wire are mainly the straight sections. They have fairly constant current densities. Then you have the inner turns with a greater current density, as you can see in red, and the outer turns with a decreased current density in uh, light green. So very much like a car on the racetrack, if you will, the current simply tries to take the shortest path.